Hey guys, so I am going to show you what I have been doing lately regarding glyphs. Glyphs are made by scribes, not inscriptionists, not inscriptors, scribes. Thank you, have a nice day. And they are potentially a very good method of profit depending on your server. Smaller servers have a lot of trouble going through a large number of glyphs at any given time so one person tends to be able to control that market pretty well but if you're on a medium server like I am or on a max population server where people have tons of alts then glyphs tend to sell through pretty well um, in fact today or yesterday I sold through 27 glyphs and I made a total of um, a little over 3600 gold so I'm averaging about 133 gold per glyph um, as can be seen through excuse me my logs here that said you're generally gonna make a lot more glyphs than you sell this is less than half of what I currently have some is still stuck in my mailbox some are even in my bank so the first thing that you need in order to really profit with glyphs is a full inscription book if you do not have the luxury of a full inscription book you're going to be interested in finding these books of glyph mastery they tend to be very expensive now in the auction house you can technically farm for them but it's probably not worth your time they have the potential of dropping off of any um, cataclysm I'm sorry not cataclysm any wrath of the lich king mob I believe in just the higher zones um, your chances of finding one in Borean Tundra are probably slim to none but I know a lot of people who farm the um, the instances up in uh, Old War, is that right? No, Storm Peak. Sorry, I'm getting my zone screwed up. Um, the dungeons that are in Storm Peaks, I know quite a few people who will farm those and have gotten pretty decent drops. Um, you could also farm Ice Crown for them, etc. You need a significant number of these. The number is something like 42, 43 of them, and yeah, they're currently selling for about. 200 to 400 gold each on my server so they're a big investment but they're very much worth it because they will give you a lot of the recipes or a lot of the glyphs that you're not able to get from the vendor the other thing that you're going to need are your inscription researches there are two types the north rend inscription research and the minor inscription research minor will always give you new minor glyph recipes and the north rend inscription research will always give you um, recipes that uh, again you cannot get from your excuse me that you cannot get from your trainer it takes roughly two months of doing your inscription research every day it has a 24-hour cooldown it might mean midnight now I can't remember um, but it does take roughly two months in order to get everything so there are some utilities some scripts some add-ons that will show you how many you're still missing how many more you're going to need to do I already have a full glyph book so I don't need to worry about that anymore unless Blizzard decides that they're going to offer a new one so once you have your full glyph book you will see past all of everything else all of the parts you will see all of the glyphs that you have well, how do you know which ones are worthwhile? I mean, some of them are kind of crappy. Nowadays, some people will actually fill out their entire glyph books, like I have for pretty much all of my level 85s have full glyph books. But not everybody is going to do that. Most of them are only going to get, make sure that they have the glyphs that they absolutely need and potentially ones that they might need to switch to. So... How do you know which ones are worth selling? Well, without a whole lot of time spent watching the market, knowing how your market goes, or knowing what classes want which glyphs, you kind of can't, especially starting as a new person. So sometimes you're going to create glyphs that just will never sell, and sometimes you're going to create glyphs that you can't keep on the market for any amount of time. Uh, Retribution Paladin glyphs sell like hotcakes. Um, Hunter glyphs sell really well. Warrior glyphs sell really well. Uh, Resto Druid glyphs sell really well. 
rogue, not so much. Rogues are not very common. Shaman, not so much. Once again, they're not nearly as common. Same with Warlock. Mage is a little bit in between. Death Knights will actually sell quite a few um, Frost Glyphs, but not so much Blood Glyphs. Um, there just aren't enough tanking, good tanking Death Knights going around. So, and of course, this is very server-specific. Your server may have a million rogues and no hunters. Hey, it could happen. So the way I personally do it is I have this awesome add-on called TSM, or Trade Skill Master. It's got a bit of a learning curve, learning how to get it set up and getting everything organized and done. And it looks a little intimidating, and God, is it ugly as hell. But this is an excellent utility if you've used um, some of the prior auction house uh, add-ons that were popular, uh, QA, also known as Quick Auctions, which turned into ZA, also known as Zero Auctions, before Cataclysm released. Um, that was replaced with, I believe, Auction Profit Master, and now it's Trade Skill Master, which has kind of combined all of the functions of your auction stuff with the Q system that became popular with KTQ or Kev Tool Q. So, uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is open it up and click on inscription. While you have your inscription window open, it's going to scan it, make sure that everything's in there, and you'll be able to see everything. There are a lot of additional item settings. You can set how much you want, you know, if you want to set a specific price for a glyph, you know, what your materials actually are, then, you know, put it in there tons of settings in here, but for the most part, the plain boring what's already there will work just fine. So once you've gotten your inscription scanned, you can open up the crafting window by clicking that little button on the top of your inscription window. And it's going to give you these lists. These will show you how many glyphs you have in your bank, how many you have on your bags, if you have the proper um, add in loaded, it will tell you how many you currently have on the auction house, how many you currently have on alts, so that you can keep track of how many you have. Additionally, if you have the proper add in loaded, or you can have it pull from auctioneer or I believe auctionator as well, uh, it will pull the sales data and will tell you, okay, this is how much it's currently selling for. It will keep track over here in the box on the right hand side. You'll see auctioning group if it's in a group already, and how much it costs to craft. So based on how much it's currently listed for, how much it costs to craft, it will tell you what your profit is. My personal rule of thumb is if it's got a 100 gold profit, I make one. Anything that's got a dash means there's not one currently up there, which means that you'll be the one setting the price. Um, a lot of people will do 50 gold or higher. Some people will do 20 gold or higher. I personally only do 100 gold or higher simply because I don't have the bag space to handle every other glyph. You'll notice that I've got some that are pretty low already. These were ones that were 100 gold at one point in time and aren't any longer. So, you know, these may end up rotting in my bags for all I know. There is a bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit of risk involved with glyphs. Um, I know people that, you know, have tons of a single glyph that, you know, will never sell. Glyph of the Voidwalker was a big, annoying bane to the glyph market uh, back when the initial 4.0 patch dropped. So, I personally look at anything that's got 100 gold or higher, and if I don't already have one made, I'm going to tell it I want to make one. So, Glyph of Feral Spirit... Elemental Mastery, Chain Lightning, Oop, there's Water Walking, Storm Strike. So these are going to add them to my queue. You see the queue over here on the left. If it's green, then that means that you've got the materials for it. If it's orange, it means you're missing materials, and it tells you which. And down here at the bottom, it shows you how many materials you need, how many are in your bags, and how many you have total. So we're going to use that in order to do our shopping. So gonna go through and finish getting the list of these. Now one of the problems with this is that it cannot keep track of what you currently have in your mailbox. So since I don't have any bag space to get out the rest of the ones in my mailbox, what I'm personally going to do here is I'm going to mark all of these that I know I don't currently have any of, at least in my inventory or in my bank, and then I'm gonna go through and post. 
So there's this great little thing that says auctioning post and you click on it and it will automatically go through and search for each of the um, items that you have or each of the glyphs that you have in your bag that is in a auction group. You'll notice all of my glyphs are in the auctioning group glyphs. I'll show you how to add those in a moment. But it's going to go through, it's going to search through, I can see it actively checking all of these right now to see what the prices are. And it will only ask me if I want to post auctions that are valid. In my case, even though I only craft anything that has a 100 gold profit, I will post anything that has at least a 50 gold profit. This allows, you know, if the market goes from 110 gold profit to 80 gold profit, well that's still pretty good profit and I really want to get the glyph out of my bag since there's a good chance it may tank down to 20 gold profit. So I'll go on and list it for 50, you know, the 50 gold profit or the 80 gold profit and you know if it sells awesome that's great if it doesn't you know I'll try again the next day so now it's gone through it's figured out you know what it needs to post that and now I'm just going to mass click through all of these so notice glyph of death coil has a bid or and buyout of 200 this is my fallback price as well as my minimum price or sorry my um, baseline price so either there's currently a glyph of death coil for less than materials plus 50 gold profit which it's an 18 gold crafting cost so it would currently be 68 gold if it's less than 68 gold it's going to post at 200 gold simply because people will sometimes buy the more expensive one they're not paying attention and so they'll buy it hey or if that you know 68 gold one sells and anything in between suddenly I'm the only one up there so uh, mine will sell or as can be seen in this case by the fact that it's dash 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 profit I'm the only one that's got one listed so 200 gold is what my asking price is if nobody else has one so I'm just gonna click all the way through here la 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 you do have to click in order to post this was something that Blizzard implemented in order to keep or in order to help with the botting problem that happened especially in the glyph market so now you do have to click and it looks like if everything sold that would be worth 13,000 gold and that's just one bag's worth and that was 89 uh, glyphs at roughly 20 gold each so that's what 1800 gold that I paid would have roughly paid in materials for 13,501 gold profit pretty darn good. Keep in mind that I'm probably not going to sell all of those, so it's not a huge deal. So now I'm going to go back and pick up the rest of the glyphs from my mailbox that I did not have enough room to gather, which isn't much. It looks like it's only uh, five. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to check and see which of those I flagged that I needed one of, but I actually don't because I picked one up out of the mailbox. So it's going to be it's going to have a one by it, but it's also going to have one in my inventory now, which would be the Glyph of Cleansing. And let's check out Hunter. Nothing there. Rogue. Nothing there. Priest. Nothing there. DK. Uh, nothing there. Shaman. Feral Spirit. There's one. Water walking, there's one. Mage. Nothing there. Whoops, warlock. Looks like I'm not making any warlock glyphs today. And druid. Druid. Alright, so that was what? Four? And I pulled in one, two, three, four, five, six. So probably those other ones. See, here's Life Bloom. It's below my 100 gold threshold. So I didn't flag one in order to. Someone's shaking their rear at me. Okay then. Um, I didn't flag one to be posted. So I'm gonna go post those real quick just to have some bag space, and then I'm gonna show you how we go material shopping. Um. A lot of full-time glyphers will actually keep two, five, ten of each glyph in stock. I just don't want to have the space for it. Um, and the market fluctuates so much on my server that to me it's not worth it. What might sell for 
you know, 180 gold today may only sell for 20 gold for the next week. So for those sorts of things, you know, I just stick with one. Also, I am mostly interested in the guild achievement, the pen is my dear. Once my guild has hit the 25,000 mark, I'm done. I won't be glyphing anymore. I'll sell out my current inventory. That's it. In the meantime, it's getting me some pretty good uh, profit, which is nice, simply because I have extremely expensive tastes in game. But uh, out of those 998 glyphs, I think I've crafted at least 900 of them since I started this back up a couple weeks ago. So, alright, I've got everything posted that I need. I need materials. So I'm going to go shopping for crafting mats. This does require the Trade Skill Master crafting add-on as well as the buying add-on? I don't know, it's got a ton of plugins, but you do need to have a specific one, and it's going to go through, and it's going to say, okay, you need ethereal ink. Sorry, my buddy is, uh, this is my glyphing partner in crime on my old server. He and I actually met through one of the gold-making forums. Uh, so it's going to go through, it's going to say, okay, you need ethereal ink. So per piece, right now, this ancient lichen can be taken apart. So right now I need 19 ethereal ink. On average, if I buy this out, I'm going to get 6 ethereal ink. So now I only need 13. Well, now I need whiptail. Whiptail turns into, do I have any on me? Probably not. Oh, no. Uh, it turns into black fallow into Blackfellow ink. Blackfellow ink can be traded down to any other ink, um, except for, of course, the rare inks. So sometimes it's cheaper per piece to buy a stack of a Cataclysm herb, mill that, turn in the Blackfellow ink, and trade down. And TSM is smart enough to figure that out. So it says that Whiptail is the smarter option, so we're going to buy that. That's going to give me six more. We're going to buy the next one, and then it's going to have us buy one more for Ethereal ink. So now it's going to check Jadefire, and we're going to go through and we're going to buy all the materials that it says we're going to need. So you may end up with a little bit more than what you actually need. For example, I bought a stack of Whiptail, which gave me roughly six, um, excuse me, gave me roughly six Black Fathom ink, and, or Black Fellow ink, which I can trade down. So I'll, I only needed one of the Ethereal, so I'll have five left over. So I can either say, eh, I don't really want to use this one because I'm going to have five left over for those two Jade Fires, so I can skip that item and go on to the Ink of the Sea. I can skip the Whiptail and see if, you know, there's a next cheaper item, which there isn't. It looks like Whiptail's kind of the bee's knees right now with a freaking amazing price. Oh my goodness. Um, I personally like to keep it stocked up because sometimes you're going to end up with a little bit less and sometimes you're going to end up with a little bit more than what you need. So I personally just buy it and if I've got extra, I've got extra, you know, I can plan it into my next shopping trip that, oh, I only really need this many instead. Ethereal is and Ink of the Sea are extremely common inks that get downgraded. See, now we're going to get Ice Sword and Tiger Lily, but that commonly get downgraded from Black Fallow ink. So let's get the Ink of the Sea. We need quite a bit of it. The vast majority of glyphs use Ink of the Sea. Also, quite a few of them use Ethereal, and the rest are a yeah, kind of mess. So see, we've gone through all of the cheap inks that will turn directly into Ink of the Sea, and now we're back to Whiptail for Ink of the Sea. So now it's going to check Celestial, and then Lion's Ink, then we're going to do some milling. And it looks like Whiptails are cheapest for Celestial today too. It really just depends on what the market looks like. If you've got a farmer through, like it appears we have right now for the Whiptail, it's going to be a really cheap option. So it looks like the Wild Steel Bloom is actually cheaper. 64 cents per piece instead of one gold for the Lion's Ink. So we're going to pick that up and then it's going to move on to the Whiptail. So we've got all of our flowers. Let's go take them apart. Whee! So we're going to pick up our flowers. Looks like we've got roughly 21 stacks or partial stacks to take apart. It's fairly easy to make a macro 
for taking things apart similar to the disenchanting and the prospecting you can create a milling macro that's simply slash cast milling and slash use and the name of the item you will of course run out of characters used eventually so you can't do it for every single um, herb on the planet but you can certainly do it for most of them and so this is going to go through and it's going to mill all of this whiptail for me first because that's built into my macro and then it's going to give me a targeting reticule when it runs out of whiptail because it can't use that anymore and then I can just click and tell it to take apart this ancient lichen or take apart this ice thorn or take apart this tiger's lily so this is a very good day for getting cheap whiptail um, in fact it might be you know if you are doing a lot of glyphing and have the gold and want to store the herbs it might be in your best interest to just go on through and buy out the rest of those whiptail you know you know that most of the time you're going to be turning it in the ink of the sea so just go on and turn it directly into ink of the sea that's that much less you have to buy next time you're at the auction house I once again I personally don't have the room to store a lot of them I'll let you see what my bank looks like at this as soon as I'm done uh, with this yes I could put them in my personal guild bank but I've kind of gotten out of the hardcore gold grinding methods and I'm now trying mostly to stick to um, you know keeping things kind of simple um, so I just mill based on the day and that means some days I get better profit than others some days you know my materials are going to cost me more than other days but for the most part it kind of evens out in the end oh we're almost done with our whip tail and our passively milling without having to actively click on things before you yell oh my god bot this is completely legit it is made with a simple macro I'm not doing any sort of botting here you notice I have full control over my mouse at all times hell I don't even know how to macro my mouse I know you can do it but meh whatever I don't believe in botting so we're gonna go through now you'll see when I press the milling thing I get a targeting reticule and so I'm just clicking on each item So we'll get through all of this. Oh. La la la. Glyphing is a reasonable method of making gold. If you have a lot of competitors, then you can have to deal with, you know, a lot of undercutting. Um, generally, if you want to play nice with your competitors and they're returning the favor, it's best to list a single glyph. If you want to try to control the market, then you can do what's called a wall, which is two, three glyphs all posted at the same price, such that, um, you know, when you've undercut somebody, three of your glyphs have to sell before they can get to theirs. Uh, generally, however, walls beget walls. So if you wall for three, when they undercut you, they're going to wall for three. And now you have to go back in and undercut them in order to make sure that yours is going to sell. Um, I have a walling competitor on my server. Uh, so for the most part, I just try to make sure that I get my stuff posted at times when I don't generally see them online. Um, if they do wall, then I have no problem going in and undercutting because I only have to cancel one auction and repost it. But it is kind of a waste of my time and honestly of theirs. Um, generally, you know, my glyphs will sell, then their glyphs will sell, and if it alternates like that, that's awesome. But some people just don't want to share the market, and that's fine. Some people have more competitive spirits. So as you can see, um, my normal bank is full. These are all of the other glyphs that I picked up from the mailbox earlier and just traded bags in in order to get them. Um, so, yeah, I need to get those posted as well, but for the moment, let's go do some crafting. So we're going to head over to the ink trader and the inscription trainer and we're going to need to purchase some paper 
So as you'll see down here, I still need Jfire, Celestial, Lions, Ethereal, and Ink of the Sea. I still need to craft all of these and then trade down, but I also need paper. And it looks like the only paper I really need today is Resilient Parchment. So I have 12 on me. I need 17. I'm just going to pick up 20. And so sometimes TSM doesn't update immediately. Sometimes you need to close it and reopen it. But you'll notice I no longer need any more resilient parchment. So now we're going to close this and start crafting. So I am interested in parts that I have the materials for. And I'm just going to start going through and crafting all of them. It's going to take a little bit, but it is certainly doable. So is there a lot of potential golden glyphs? There is. Um, my buddy Elisha from over on Nessing Wary and I used to do a pretty good job of wrangling the market over there. Um, there was another glyphor that was more than happy to uh, burn glyphs down into the ground. So be it. After a while, the two of us kind of got sick of fighting with her. He's no longer in glyphs. I actually sold him my glyphing empire. I have pictures somewhere for... What was it 150,000, 200,000 gold? Um, and then he eventually just sold it all to the third competitor. So as far as I know, the th that other competitor pretty much has free reign, but the server is small. It's a new player server. Pretty much one person is all that's needed for glyphs there, and three people is way too many. I wish you'd stop signing on and off, dude. This server, however, uh, where I am now, Thunderhorn, has a medium population, has a pretty good alt population. So people are constantly, you know, bringing in new characters, leveling up new characters. So it can support more than one scribe or glyphor on the server. So, excuse me. So some, and competition is good. It keeps everybody from, you know, getting stagnant. It means that, you know, there aren't any times when there are a lot of glyphs that don't have any listed. I've had people that have offered 300 gold for a glyph that wasn't available on the auction house. When that happens, I'm more than happy to, you know, crank out my inks and parchment, no problem. But, you know, why not have those glyphs up there all the time? Uh... So glyphing can provide you with a bit of gold. As I said, I made you know 3,600 gold yesterday, only listing once, and only listing either those glyphs that I already had made or only crafting new glyphs that were a uh, hundred gold profit. And some of those sold, and some of the lower ones sold. And on average, it was 103, th 133 gold per glyph. So it's pretty reasonable profit. It just has, you know, a lot of stuff that you have to do and a pretty decent investment, mostly in time, simply because the more glyphs you have, the more profit you have the potential of. Everybody and their brother can create the glyphs that are learned from the vendor. Those are generally the ones that have no profit or very little profit, simply because people will make 5, 10, 15 of them while leveling. Okay, maybe not that many now, since I think every glyph gives three skill points. But, you know, it does increase the number that are on the auction house and, you know, decrease and generally not many people are going to want those glyphs. You know, most people have already gotten them because they're fairly cheap or they had them back, you know, at the beginning of Catalanche. So there's not really any need, excuse me, to have more of those glyphs. So that's called market flooding when somebody posts a lot of the same glyph up and Flooding can be a very specific and, you know, potentially good tactic. It can drive out competition by minimizing the amount of profits that are made. Um, and flooding the market, you can either force them to undercut you, then buy their underpriced glyphs, or you can just drive them out completely. I personally don't flood if I'm ready to leave the market, you know, then... I will sell my stuff to another competitor or I'll just wait until it all goes and if I've got maybe 20 glyphs left then I might just post for dirt cheap. Um, but flooding is another common tactic for people that just want to get out of the market, get it gone and piss off their competition in the process. Oh, we're slowly getting made all the way through all of these inks of the sea. Glyphing is pretty time consuming. You've got to sit here, AFK, crafting, not really doing much. Usually during this time, I'm keeping half of an eye on the um, 
excuse me, half of an eye on Slash 2 and the other half of the eye on Guild Chat and, you know, sometimes if I've got, you know, 80 inks to craft, I'll alt-tab and read my email or check forums, things like that. But as you'll notice, you know, I'm getting pretty low in here, so it's not going to take too much longer. So while this is doing that, TSM requires you for that quote-unquote auto-posting feature, requires you to set up groups. A group is, well, a group. It's a group of an item that all have similar characteristics that you can set rules for as far as their pricing and how many you want listed go. So I have the glyph group, which pretty much every glyph I own goes into. Um, every once in a while when a brand new glyph comes out and you can really increase the amount of um, gold that you get from it, excuse me, you can... Uh, you know, put that in a glyph group of all its own and up the price on it significantly. But especially if you've got a number of competitors, pretty quickly that those glyphs are going to get moved down into the normal glyph prices. So your basic sets. So under categories and groups, you start with defaults. This is basically the default for every group that you make. Um, you can have groups for gems. You can have groups for cloth. You can have groups for volatiles, anything that you sell enough of and at a, you know, fairly static price, you can have in a group. So I always check, you know, maximum price gap if there are, you know, uh, if there are stacks of a thousand, which is pretty much impossible right now, then I'm going to ignore it. If the lowest price and the next lowest price has a thousand a thousand percent price gap, then I'm going to undercut the second highest instead of the first highest. Uh, I post for 12 hours simply because the market changes often enough. By the time those 12 hours are up, I've probably been undercut or the price has changed or, you know, uh, by the time it drops off, others may have sold and I can relist for 200 gold instead of the 80 gold it was at. Uh, a maximum of four of each auction will be posted. Um by default, and I have one item per stack. I undercut by one copper, I have a minimum price of one gold, my fallback is five, etc. This is for everything. For glyphs, you can then do specific overrides. So I have a post cap of one, I only ever post one of each glyph at a time, simply because I don't want to flood the market, and walling, I don't personally wall. For glyphs, I actually undercut by 10 copper. I can undercut by one copper or one silver or even one gold. It's really just what you personally would like. Keep in mind that the more you undercut by, the more quickly a price will tank, especially if you're in a uh, undercutting war minimum price. So if it's less than 50 gold, I don't post it ever. Period. End of story. And my fallback price is 200 gold if there are... Excuse me. If there are no individuals uh, posting, uh, excuse me, if there are no individuals posting, it starts at 200 gold. If glyphs are listed at 500 gold or higher, I will post at 200 gold. Yay, first glyph sale of the day. Um, if they're uh, simply because 500 gold glyphs do sell on occasion, but not often enough. Um, people tend to bulk even at 200 gold glyph prices from time to time. So 200 is where I personally set. Um, and then if the price goes below 50 gold, then it posts at fallback or that 200 gold. So you can set all of those. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking to figure out how you want to handle it. Um, and then you add your items or remove your items. You can search by name. This is the most awesome feature ever. So if I've created a new glyph that I've never posted before, simply because it hadn't been at a proper market price, then it'll highlight it when I say glyph of, and I can just click add, or I can just click remove, and it'll automatically put it in there for me. So I've made all of my inks. I am going to add a glyph of obliterate to my queue. That is a death knight glyph obliterate right here because it's sold and it's sold for more than 100 gold so now I need to trade down some inks 
La 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 la. So I'm going to trade down. I need 19 ink of the sea. Where'd you go? And 13 ethereal ink. I need 7 lion's ink. I need 3 celestial ink. And 2 jade fire. Come on. I don't know. Did it do both of those? Uh, yes, it did do. So sometimes, as I said, it doesn't update. So you have to reopen it. We're all green. We're good to go. And now it's just going to go through. I'm going to keep on clicking on craft next. And it's going to craft each one that's in the queue. As soon as it's crafted, it's going to remove it. And it'll do the next one. And that's it for us. So I'm going to craft through all of these. You'll notice over here I started at 998 for the pen is mightier. Let's see how far we get today. Generally I average somewhere between um, 10 and 40 glyphs crafted a day. That's not necessarily how many I sell the day before simply because the market changes from day to day. Um, but anywhere from 10 to 40 is normal. About 25 is average. Um, so we've already crafted 11 glyphs. Come on. Uh, and you do need to be careful from time to time. Sometimes if you click craft next before it's actually removed the glyph you just crafted, you will get what's called a double craft. Um, sometimes that can be a bad thing because it means you have to go buy or trade down more materials and it's a glyph that may not actually sell. Sometimes it's a good thing because it's you know a glyph that's going to sell really well anyway see here. Whoop. I was concerned that that was one that had double crafted, but it didn't. That was just me being paranoid. So we're going to finish going through. Almost done. Almost done. And then we're going to po post all of those. So it's good to have common competitors on your friend list. That way you know when they're logging on. If you have them on your friend list on alts, you know when they've logged on and when they've logged off. The best time to undercut your competitor is right after they've logged off. I commonly will actually just AFK while on my character simply because that's what people, you know, my competitors will sometimes wait for is for me to log off. So, you know, if I AFK on her for a while, then they may get bored and go do something else. And, you know, by the time I log off, maybe they're in a raid, maybe they're in a dungeon, they can't log over immediately and do this. Um, if you're dual boxing, it makes it really easy. Uh, if your glyph poster is on another account that isn't on your main, not only can it confuse the individuals, um, not only can it confuse your competition because they can't keep track of you know who your alts are, but also it allows you to babysit the auctions and babysit your undercuts without having to um, you know completely interfere with your normal leveling questing dungeoning whatever all right so we are all crafted out oops let's get over here so we're gonna post these glyphs we're gonna check to see if any of them are not in our group Yep, it looks like there are quite a few, actually, that have never been in our group before. So we're going to highlight those. We're going to add them. And now they will get posted with the rest of them. And here we go. Going to post again. So it, I find it best to let it go through and finish posting everything or searching everything before you actually start clicking on the button to post. The reason is that um, you can only do one action at a time, either a search or a submit. Um, and if you're trying to submit in the middle of it trying to search, then it can cause it a lot of lag. I've actually had it hang up my computer before. Um, so I find it best to just let it do all its searching and then post, and you can actually leave while it's still posting. All of those posts are queued. So it's going to create all of those auctions. If you were to go through and count, there would be 40 of them here. 
and you can go on and start heading off to do your next thing. So now I'm going to trade out my bags in order to, well first I'm going to sort my bags, sort special, just to keep it all nice and organized and stack it just in case, nope nothing there and now I'm going to sort or you know trade out my bags for these full glyph bags that have glyphs that I need to go through and finish up and we're gonna post those and I'm done at this point it's simply a matter of waiting for them to sell and then coming back after the 12 hours getting everything out of the bank and doing it all again so that is how I glyph your mileage of course may vary you may find something that works better for you but this is what works for me keep in mind that trade skill master does have a bit of a learning curve especially if you're not already familiar to either your kev tool queue or zero auctions quick auctions auction profit master um, there are some excellent guides on the just my two coppers forum by the way just my two coppers is an excellent blog um, I am a member there I'm not affiliated with them they don't pay me or anything like that um, but there are a group of great people that enjoy the economy of WoW discussing it figuring out how to make the best of it so I'm gonna get these posted I'm gonna hope for good sales today and until next time take care Hey guys, this is just kind of a follow-up to uh, my glyphing earlier today. I just logged in. It's been a couple hours since I posted all those glyphs and checked my mail and lo and behold, I have 18 glyphs that had sold and ended up in my mailbox for a total of 2,885 gold that averaged out to, what, 188 gold? Sorry, not even that. 160 gold each. Uh, you'll notice that quite a few sold at 190 gold, 1 silver, which is the amount um, of the 200 gold minus the 5% auction house cut plus my 1 silver deposit. So quite a few sold at my fallback. You'll also notice that one of them here, the Glyph of Spirit Tap, sold at higher than my normal fallback, which means that somebody had one listed for significantly higher. I undercut them and I got the sale. You can also see here that I've got six more glyphs coming in four of which were at my fallback, and the other two were definitely um, above 100 gold each. Oh, looks like, in fact, one of them just appeared with the gold in my mailbox. Notice that it's the same individual who bought these, plus that one that just showed up. And if you also look through here, you'll see that a number of times the glyphs that are quickly bought together are all for the same class. It's generally individuals who are trying to uh, clear out their spell or uh, fill up their glyph books so glyphs can be pretty profitable especially if you take the time to do them and end up with a pretty good market until next time